Hi, I'm Robin Smith, and this is my show After Charlottesville, Studio Work 2017 to 2024 at Diablo Valley College Art Gallery. The work in this show from 2017 to the present is comprised of drawings, mixed media paintings, and a variety of prints. Drawing is the backbone of my practice. Everything starts with drawing. Drawing has always been at the heart of my practice. Working from photographs, I make charcoal drawings of all of the images that eventually become paintings or prints. I work quickly. No drawing takes more than 15 minutes. During that time, I claim the image as my own, making quick decisions about composition, light, shadow, form, and gesture. The images are pared down and distilled to their raw essence. In this area, I am focusing a lot on the place of Virginia. I did a residency at the Virginia Center for the Creative Arts in 2017 and another one recently in 2024, thus the book ending of After Charlottesville. When I was there in 2017, it was right after Heather Heyer had been killed in the riot by the white supremacist groups in Charlottesville that were um, sort of gathering in support of the Robert E. Lee equestrian statue that many people wanted to be taken down. Eventually that statue was taken down, but when I saw it after the riot, it was shrouded in black plastic, thus this image. So these pieces done at the works in uh, Vallejo, California, under the auspices of the California Society of Printmakers, explore this statue from its inception to its final state. Now it has been melted down, but this is the state that I saw it in. This piece called Sweetbriar is about the landscape of Virginia. Uh, I visited much of the landscape of the enslaved people's burial ground at Sweetbriar College which this piece is about. This piece is called 16 millimeter. It's a photopolymer etching. It alludes to the Ku Klux Klan imagery that is also in the um, Robert E. Lee pieces. And this is a newer piece just completed in 2023 that has some of the imagery that I began my residency with in 2017. These are handbills that refer to the, uh, the selling of, or the auctions in the 1800s that auctioned people, but they also, on the same auction block, auctioned horses and mules and furniture. So I printed over those historic handbills the bucolic Virginia landscape. I really see the landscape as being witness to the atrocities of human existence. And you really feel that in Virginia because the landscape feels ancient. These pieces were recently done at VCCA. These are uh, landscapes of the surrounding area near Charlottesville, which have been taken over by kudzu, which is a invasive plant that is taking over the landscape. So we've got these enormous mounds of uh, sort of a sculpture with a sculptural look that are quite beautiful, but in fact, what's happening is this invasive vine is destroying the Virginia landscape. So again, it is the landscape as victim and witness to humanity. This whole wall is about the invasion, the Russian invasion of Ukraine. I selected the city of Mariupol as a touchstone for this series. This was the city in which the steel plant, the gigantic steel plant was used by soldiers and civilians as a last place of refuge before the Russians destroyed it. And uh, this whole series, which was ongoing for about two years, refers to the city of Mariupol and its destruction. This is another piece from the Mariupol series. In this long wall of mixed media paintings, 
I reference a lot of my travels, a lot of different places on Earth. Morocco, Brighton Beach in the UK, uh, I have a lot about Iceland in here. These are mixed media works done with asphalt, gesso, casein pigments, and polymer transfers on wood. I tend to take seemingly disparate images like an old school bus being destroyed by vines, an alligator in Florida, and a beached, uh, a grounded uh, ship from Iceland, from Northern Iceland, and I put them together in ways that make some kind of sense to me, possibly to you, not sure about that. In this piece, we have an old Icelandic ship that is juxtaposed with lava and in these areas we're looking at images of a time capsule from the New York World's Fair in 1964. How do they go together? You tell me. Herding sheep in Iceland and the words of one of my favorite historians, Robert Caro, this is a facsimile of one of his manuscripts and a bird in the shallows in Aptos, California. Parts of these are about my life, my specific life, but there are also parts of these pieces that are quite universal. This is a World War I image. This is a, a bridge in Iceland. And in here, we are looking at the numbers of one million dead of COVID. And here are commemorations of some of the people that died from the front page of the New York Times. So I put these things together so we can time travel. Destruction in the early part of the century, destruction in our own time, and possibly the hope of a rainbow bridge, which has a lot of different meanings. During COVID and lockdown, I was unable to travel, as were any of us, and so a lot of my imagery was about what was right in front of me during that very tough time. So the burned North Coast after the CZU fires, and in this piece I show a medical photograph of my heart after a sort of shocking heart attack that I suffered in uh, fall of 2020. So this is from the, the series End My Heart, and I did a number of pieces in that series in print. So the burned North Coast and my heart. The August series began as a response to the Black Lives Matter protests in Portland. And then in here, I'd actually started working from an image of the devastating fires in Australia the year before, but I was working on this in August, 2020, when our own town caught fire. Beautiful birds and Russian Cossacks, what can I say? <laughs> and another piece about my heart. This is called Mane and My Heart, My Horse's Mane, and a photograph of my heart. In the cases, I am showing some of the ephemera of printmaking. Copper plates, solar plates, plexiglass plates, a collagraph, another solar plate, and some of the inks. This is a lino cut. In this show, I have probably six or seven different techniques of printmaking that are used in the works. As an artist, we so often make things, put them away. We see them sort of in a vacuum, oh, this time frame, that time frame. But this show is such a privilege because it allows me to see the connections in pieces from six years. So from 2017 to 2024, when I thought, oh, this is a one-off, this is a one-off, I now can see the connections between all these different pieces and that the whole five, six, seven years comprises sort of a moment in time. And it's so lovely to be able to see that all in one place. So thank you. Diablo Valley College Art Gallery.